This week, the Santa Fe, New Mexican reported on a study that showed 80% of undocumented immigrants living in New Mexico are likely to be deported when they appear before an immigration judge. In the U.S., deportation rates have declined in recent years, but President Obama is set to deport more immigrants than his predecessor, believe that or not. Sophie, well, let me ask you a quick question. The immigration judge thing is a bit of a confusing deal for a lot of us. So it's not your field of expertise, certainly, but could you give us a, just a, a, a quick general a briefer on so how the, this all works? The immigration court that we're talking about when we talk about New Mexico is actually located in El Paso, Texas. So right. um, if we feel like pointing fingers at anybody, it's a great <laughs> New Mexico Texans. pastime to point, Texans. point fingers at Texas. <laughs> And I mean, one thing that I think is worth noting is that, mm -hmm. yes, the rate of immigration uh, of deportations does seem quite high this year, but we're talking about 46 total cases. Right. And so when we say 80% 80, 80 of that, it's actually a small number of people mm -hmm. uh, here in New Mexico. And it remains to be seen whether perhaps um, the immigration cases that went up before that uh, court in El Paso were the most obvious or the most egregious going first, and then maybe later in the year we see fewer. So I, th I think it's important to note mm -hmm. that, that this may not be a solid statistic for the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, your, your, court, your court date happens in Texas, mm -hmm. and it can be a real hardship for people to get to Texas, to get representation in Texas. Now, sure. immigration attorneys in New Mexico can appear in that Texas immigration court, but it still is, it presents a real challenge. Money, all it, that. Mo money sure. and all of that and sometimes important witnesses are across the border in Mexico mm -hmm. so that can create issues as well. Mm -hmm. um, it, it is a really tough time and I'll, and I'll point out uh, this week the U.S. Supreme Court failed to end uh, sort of a freeze on the, the DAPA policy which was the president's attempt right. to keep families together right. uh, when family members had not uh, committed felonies in the U.S. or anything similar. Right. The idea was you could stay with your children here in the U.S in a, sort of an unofficial capacity. You're not given citizenship, you're not on the path to citizenship. Mm -hmm. Well, that's been frozen, it remains frozen under the Supreme Court ruling. So it's a really challenging time mm -hmm. in general for people who are looking to, um, to stay in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Senator, it's, interestingly, I mentioned that uh, George W. Bush, you know, our President Obama right now has deported and will deport more than he did. It's a surprise, but also sticks in the craw, I think, of a lot of folks who support the President. Mm -hmm. There was a very different tone coming into office when it came to immigration. Didn't seem to quite get there. Of all the big issues he had to deal with in his eight years, this one just didn't quite get there. What do you, what do you make of all this? What's in the air now for I I deportations of, of immigrants? What's, what's happening? Well, I think, you know, <clears throat> the, uh, Obama has a great legacy, and, you know, um, mm -hmm. but I think a, a definite black mark is the fact that by the time he leaves office, three million, you know, uh, deportations, which is right. more than Bush ever did. Right. And I think it was a real challenge for folks with mixed families, uh, with immigrants and undocumented folks, to say, you know, here's this president who really has courted the, the Latino community, the immigrant community, mm -hmm. and really has, frankly, a dismal record on deportations. I was, I was talking to a uh, Congressman Grijalva, who's one of the leaders on uh, in the Hispanic Caucus, and said, "Like I said, how did this happen?" Right. And he said, uh, "You know, we were told by the president's folks that we, we take a hard line, and we you know we really got to show the Republicans we're serious, and then we can get immigration reform done." And guess what? They never got the second part right. of that deal. And so, uh, you saw it on the campaign trail. A lot of reasons why a lot of immigrants, activists, were supporting Bernie Sanders, for example, and not so warm on on Hillary, who was seen sort of as the, as the president's person on this is because they really are very, very disappointed with the Obama record on, on deportations. And so um, I think that's going to be a challenge to get him back. Fortunately for, uh, for the Democrats, you know, the alternative is, is te you know, Building terrible. Building a wall, yeah. So, but had it been a, a different sure. outcome, had you had someone who was sort of, um, who, was, who was willing to talk about this seriously, we we can't really uh, hold the higher the higher the moral high ground on this one because frankly you know deporting three million uh, undocumented folks uh, you know the overwhelming majority of whom are just law abiding folks um, uh, and then when it comes to a state like New Mexico and I know you've had folks say this you look at our flag I mean we have a long history with Mexico you know most of these folks are Mexican right. undocumented folks and and mixed families and our own history with them the name of our state for Christ's sake you know um, I think it's really uh, it's disappointing, even though it is a small number, that instead of sort of bringing up the rear, that we aren't leading uh, the country and saying, look, we are a nation of immigrants, and we are a state of immigrants, mm -hmm. and we have deep ties with Mexico, and we ought to be 
uh, we ought to really be doing something much more progressive. Interesting. Does that sound reasonable to you, Merritt Allen, as approach? Because something's still not working. Well, After eight exactly. Years of this and and, and I, I also want to <clears> agree <throat> with um, Sophie's analysis that this was kind of the headline and the rest of the story I didn't think really matched because there were a lot of good data in the story mm -hmm. that didn't really play to the headline. And uh, the answer is we continue to lack a coherent immigration policy. Yeah. Um, our low numbers in New Mexico, I think, are due to um, our low overall numbers. Uh, are due to a number of things. One, um, uh, we uh, have a very fluid border. Two, the federal government has chosen not to enforce um, employers and uh, we lack a guest worker program. Mm -hmm. And I think there's an understanding that particularly in the agricultural um, uh, communities, we would have um, failed businesses if we actually held uh, 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 farmers accountable to I-9 standards. Right. And so we have a, a very fluid border. We have families who are going back and forth across the border. We're different culturally, but as a nation and actually as a world, immigration is immigration policy that's uh, consistent and coherent is really uh, seems to be a stretch goal. There you go. I pinched you a little bit here, Dan. I'm sorry, we've got about 30 oh. seconds left if you could, uh, if you have a yeah, question. Yeah, I, I mean, I just, I just, <clears throat> I think that we, the problem is we don't have a, a, a coherent border policy. Mm -hmm. um, I think that the fact that, that this is happening the way it's happening, uh, the fact that the president came in doing one thing and we're ending up doing another thing, mm -hmm. I just think it highlights that it's a serious issue that needs to seriously be discussed. And I think at some point the people in Washington are going to stop listening to the people in Massachusetts and New York and start talking to the people in New Mexico and Texas and Arizona that are living That's this right. every single day. Exactly right. That's all the time we have, guys. Thank you. Terrific Friday night. I'm Gene Grant. Thanks for joining us this week for New Mexico in Focus. And as always, we appreciate your time and effort to stay informed and engaged. We'll see you next week in Focus. Funding for New Mexico in Focus provided by the McCune Charitable Foundation and the Nalita E. Walker Fund for KNME-TV, the KNME-TV Endowment Fund, and viewers like you.